Hey, what's up? I'm Bianca, a part-time artist here on YouTube, and today I'm going to be talking about what it's like growing up adopted. So, I was brought to America when I was one years old, and actually my first language was Spanish. And when my parents took me to the doctor's appointment, um, you know, to get all your vaccines and such, uh, they actually spoke to me in Spanish and they said, point to the Mickey Mouse clock. And I pointed to the Mickey Mouse clock, <laughs> which is quite cute actually. But unfortunately, since my parents are from Pennsylvania and New York, slowly over time, well, probably really fast actually, um, I lost my ability to understand Spanish and I went like full English. And I really am bad at Spanish now. And I took a year, I uh, know, a half a year in middle school and I took full four years in high school and there were so many kids that were not Spanish, speaking Spanish way better than I did. And actually I had to get a tutor to help me get through Spanish because I was that bad. So just because you started in one language and switched to another does not mean it will come back easily. And it's probably because I was such a young child, a baby, that it's that hard, but um, yeah. Unfortunately, I wanted to learn Japanese, and I'm kind of glad I didn't do that either because Japanese seems very difficult to learn. Anyways, so you might be wondering, what do my parents look like? So my mom is Italian and German, and then my dad is German and English, and maybe some Dutch. So they're white, and I'm actually very fair-skinned, um, but I do tan very easily. I can get pretty tan in the summer if I don't wear sunscreen and I go out in the sun a lot. And I usually avoid this just for health reasons. Um, but um, in the summertime when I was a child, I actually did play around, play around, play in the sun a lot because that's what kids do, especially back in the 90s and 2000s. And I would actually get quite tan. And it was a little off-putting and I was only about mm, six or seven years old. And this girl that was supposedly my friend, I had a weird friend group of like, we'd get together in the neighborhood and play with each other. Um, and she was like, your skin's dark. And I was probably the only non-white girl in the friend group. And my mom went off on her, not politely, cause she is a child, but it's like, where was she learning that stuff? Why did she have to say that? It was a little weird. I don't actually remember that but I'm sure it didn't sound great to my parents. Now there probably wasn't a lot of differences while growing up, but as I got older and I didn't, and I actually saw how people treated me differently, not necessarily like a bad way, but in a different way. And it's not from just like white people or anything like that. It's actually more from Latino people. They will try to speak Spanish to me, and I don't know what they're saying. I have been asked multiple times in Spanish, oh, do you speak Spanish? And I'm like, poquito, poquito, like, which means very little if you don't know. And even then, it's like, I am better at reading Spanish and remembering like five words, and then versus like speaking it. If I have to speak it, I am speaking extremely slow. And if they're speaking to me, I probably have no clue what you're saying. And it's just like, sorry, I don't know what you're saying. Unless it's like, como estas? And I have the worst Spanish accent, by the way. It sounds like a white person trying to speak Spanish, who's terrible at Spanish, because there's plenty of people who aren't. Another thing, along with looking Latino, m maybe mixed even, because I do have a good amount of indigenous in me, DNA-wise, is people get confused what race I am. <laughs> so I have gotten Asian culture, especially, or Asian race, including uh, usually like the Philippines or Thailand, just because, you know, it, it uh, I have darker skin, I'm small, I'm only 4'11", like petite, so that can be a little bit like, oh, are you from the Philippines? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not, so. There's also that. 
So next up, I want to talk about family dynamics. And this is a weird, weird topic for me. Now, luckily, I'm not an only child, or luckily for me, like, this is my situation. Um, my brother also was adopted from Paraguay, and he actually has um, special needs. So we, the way we grew up, it was quite different, me and him. Like, and I was the firstborn, let's just say, first adopted. Um, so I had a lot of strict rules, and it might have just been from coming from a very strict family. Like, growing up, I didn't really see the strictness because you're just a child, right? You're, and you do whatever your parents say without really questioning it. And it, when middle school came around, my rebellious stage started to come along because it's like middle school, you're trying to fit in with everyone. You're trying to wear the clothing that people find popular. You're trying to just look a certain part and act a certain part. And my parents, mainly my mom, are very Christian and certain clothing of the 2000s, you know, tight fitting tops, push up bras, low rise pants, and mini skirts did not fly. Let's just say that the Italian went strong with this woman, especially through Catholicism. So, trying to wear what the other girls were wearing just didn't work for me. As in, I got yelled at a lot because yes, I did try to wear tight tops with the your boobs popping up, even though that's kind of gross when you think about it as a middle schooler and freshman or any high schooler really. But it's like, you're just trying to fit in. You don't know any better. It probably didn't come from a place of malice or, you know, just hormones, you know? And it's, that was the, that was how everyone dressed back then. And part of me really wonders whether or not this connection with my mom, it was mainly my mom, that we went through a rough patch. Now we're fine. We get along great now. Um, we've both, you know, emotionally settled and we're actually quite close. And I can tell her things. Sometimes she freaks out, but not in the way she used to. And I'm obviously not in the household anymore. So that probably helps just because we can do our own thing. And we have a close relationship now, and we see her, I see her like once a month, and I talk to her twice a week, maybe more if I feel like it. But um, growing up, life was very hard, and what I was trying to say is, I wonder if that biological, or like, not biological, but that bond when you give birth to your child, in that moment wasn't there because I was adopted and we had these rifts because we did not connect exactly on the same level as a mom and their son or their daughter or their child or and whatnot. So I always wonder if she was, we were biologically related, things would have been a lot easier for us. And she was also an older mom. Now my mom adopted me in 1992 and she was actually born in 1952. So that is a 40 year difference of multiple generations could have been in there. Maybe two, maybe not multiple, but two. Um, so we just did not click. She didn't understand certain things. She didn't understand me. I went through an emo scene phase, probably still a little bit emo, you know, it never goes away. Um, and it just didn't fly. And I was extremely depressed through high school and beginning of college and probably up till like 25. And that was more of me just being chaotic and emotional. And it has very thin, or it has gone way down. I am actually probably the happiest I've ever been. And I am 32 years old and I will be actually 33 in March. So I would say I didn't get my shit together until I was around 28 when, you know, that stuff went down and people had to stay home, which is, for me, was great. I had the best time not working, doing art, having a fun time in, in my little apartment with my cats, drawing, watching movies, playing tons of video games. That was great. Anyways. 
back to being adopted in America by white people, it has, it's not as bad as it sounds. Like, it's a little awkward when you may take a photo with your family and people don't know you're adopted. They're like, why do your children look like that? Like, not, maybe not in a bad way. Maybe they're not asking that, like, mean. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Why do your children look like that? Um, but, um, it was kind of weird at family reunions at first. My grandparents, actually my parents have told me that they were super nervous meeting me when I came to America. I was a baby. I was a literally a baby. Like, what would what they have been nervous about? Me being like, uh-uh-uh, you're not my real grandparents. <laughs> but I actually jumped into their arms and they like fell in love with me. So who doesn't love a baby jumping into your arms being happy, obviously, not sad and crying. I just give the baby back then. Now, um, my parents have wanted to take me back to Paraguay, and they even asked if I would like to try and meet my biological parents. And it's kind of weird for me. I have no interest in actually speaking to my bi biological parents, and even not even a huge interest of going back to Paraguay. And I'm not sure why I would like to go visit in general. I, in, I would just love to travel. And if Paraguay is a place to go, let's go. But there are many other places I'd rather travel, even in America more so than visiting Paraguay. And I don't know why I wouldn't want to meet my biological mother. There's no hatred, obviously. I am so happy that I'm in America versus Paraguay because Paraguay is quite a corrupt country. And if I had not been adopted and stayed there, either A, I would have been a maid, B, um, a lady of the night, uh, C, dead. And, or let's be a little bit positive, I guess I could have gotten some sort of minimal education and gotten married and whatnot. But, eh, you know, that's not really great options to me. Like. I live such a fulfilling life right now. I've gotten to go to college. I've gotten to travel. I've been to Mexico. I've been to Italy. I've been to Austria. I've been to Belgium. I've been to where else? Budapest and another country. I can't remember. Um, but anyways, I've gotten to do so many things. I've gotten to go to camps. I've gotten to go to different parts of states in America and go on vacations every year with my family and all that because I was allowed to live such a privileged life. Now I'm not saying like we were rich or anything, but we were definitely middle class and I got to live in a, a, a like a steady home, you know, we never lost our house or anything like that. I didn't have to worry about food on the table. I didn't have to worry about wearing the same clothes over and over again until they ripped. Like. People like to put America down a lot, and I understand there are things happening in the world, and especially in America, that people don't agree with, but there are, and it's not saying we can't improve. I'm not saying that we can always get better and have a better environment for everyone. But there are so many other countries, especially third world countries, like if you were born there, you would be working in dirt and be dirty and be poor and probably have an even more corrupt government than the one that we are in now. Quote unquote, allegedly. Um, so it's really, I'm not religious or anything, a blessing though that I was adopted into such a loving family and such a loving environment, even though I might have, have not experienced that a lot through my middle school and high school and my teenage years, but I have such respect now for my parents and what they have sacrificed for me and my brother just so I could have a better life. And I hope that uh, they make me proud, They I make them proud, sorry, <laughs> I'm getting a little emotional, um, and that I'm not such a disappointment to them. Um, Sorry. Anyways, what I was trying to get to, I just hope that they're, they can see that I worked, I am working hard 
to make my life good, to make a better life for myself, and working towards making the world better by hopefully maybe if you want kids, you will like want to adopt as well because um, my parents gave me all the love in the world and they wanted to adopt me. My dad actually wanted a girl first, which is crazy from a male perspective, most men well, would want a son, but my dad was actually like, a girl would be awesome, and here I am. Um, so, yeah, <sighs> sorry. <laughs> Anyways, if you have any questions or you're adopted, drop a comment below and let's talk about it. Um, if you're adopted, where, where, from what country, or if it's America, what state, or, um, yeah, let me know what you thought about this video. And if you want to see more videos, check out my channel. I'll see you on the flip side. Bye!